Today, we're going to make this. Really quick before we get into it, today's video is sponsored by Atlantic.net. Atlantic.net provides great VPS hosting and they are offering a free one gig virtual server with SSDs and block storage for free for a year, plus $25 in free credits to use for other services they offer if you use the link in the description below. It's super easy to use. After I signed up, I was able to provision a new server in less than 30 seconds. And unlike other big names in this industry, they have great, always available technical support. They also have incredible reliability and redundancy on their servers. So try Atlantic.net to develop, test, or launch your next project. Click the link in the description below and use the code STACKER to get your $25 in credit. All right, so I have a blank HTML and CSS file, and we'll start with the HTML. We'll use Emmet to create a boilerplate. And we'll name this neon button. And then in the body, we're going to have an anchor uh, with the class of button. And then within that, we'll have four spans. Just like that. In the href, it's just not going to go anywhere. And then we'll just name this neon button. So we'll save that. And then let's go ahead and add our link to our CSS file. And that is it for the HTML. And then we'll start on the CSS. We'll start with some standard resets. Margin zero. Padding zero. Box sizing border box. And we're gonna set the font family to console us. Then we'll do a sans serif fallback. After that, we're going to set some color variables. So in our root, we're going to name these background color. That's going to be a dark blue. And then primary color. And that will be a different shade of blue. And then secondary color. And that's going to be another shade of blue. Right after that, we're going to set some styles in our body. Uh, we'll set the display to flex. And justify content is going to be center. And align items is going to be center. We'll set a minimum height of 100 VH. And then the background is going to be uh, our background color. So we'll set that var background color. All right, let's save that and see where we're at so far. Okay, so we've centered everything and we changed the background color. So now let's work on the button. So we had a class on there of BTN. We're going to set the position on this to relative and we're going to display this as block. And then we'll set some padding on here. Uh, we're just going to be 15 pixels top and bottom and 30 uh, left and right. We'll set the color on this to uh, the variable primary color. And then we'll set uh, text transform to uppercase. And then letter spacing, we're going to set that to 18 pixels. And then text decoration, none. Font size is going to be uh, 36 pixels and then overflow hidden. And then we're going to have some transition on this. We'll set that to 0 0.2 seconds. All right, so let's save that. That's looking good. The next thing that we'll do is work on the glow effect and then we'll work on the border animation. So button hover is our next item. And we're going to set the color on this to the secondary color. And then we'll set the background to the primary color. And then we're going to have a box shadow on here. And there's actually several box shadows. So I'm just going to copy and paste these and we'll go over it. Let me format this to make it easier to read. 
Okay, so in a box shadow, we can set several box shadows by placing a comma after them. So all of these shadows have the same primary color, uh, but they have different spreads. So the first one would be a 20 pixel spread, and then 80, and then 160, and then 320. So that's going to make it look like a gradual glow effect. All right, and then after that, we're going to set a transition delay. And we want that to be one second. All right, we'll save that and see where we're at. All right, so there's a one second delay. We're going to have our border animation first and then the glow. So we're leaving time for that to happen. All right, so in our HTML, we had four spans. So we're going to use those to animate the borders around the button. So the first thing that we'll do is we'll say button span. And we're going to set the position on these to absolute. And then we'll set these to display block. And then we're going to target each span individually. So we're going to say button span nth child one. So the first span, we want the top on this to be zero. Transform, translate X. And we're going to set this initially to a negative 115%. Width is going to be 100%. Height is going to be four pixels. And then background, we're going to set this to a linear gradient. And that's going to be 90 degrees. Transparent to the primary color. So the gradient is going from a transparent color to the primary color. And next we'll set the hover. So button hover, and then targeting the span nth child one. So on hover, we want the transform and translate X to go to 100%. Transition on this will set to one second. All right, let's save that. Now when we hover, you see that goes across the top. So what we're doing is in our transform translate X, X is our horizontal. So we're saying a negative 115%. I want to make sure that the line is well off to the left side. And then when we hover, we want it to go from a negative 115% to a positive 100%. And so that's going to make it go all the way off to the right. And so we'll do the same thing with the other spans. So what I'll do is I'll just copy this, Alt Shift down arrow. So the first one was the top. Now we'll work on the bottom. So we'll say that's the third one. We'll just go clockwise. So one on top, two on the right, three on the bottom, and four on the left. So we'll do the top and bottom first. The third child, we'll change the ones to a three. And then we're gonna change top to bottom. Translate X. This time we want it to be the opposite again. So it's going to be 100%. It's going to make it go off to the right. Width and height will be the same. The gradient will be uh, the same except for the degrees. We're going to change to 270. So just the opposite again. And then on hover, we want it to be the negative 115%. Now on this one, the duration of the transition is going to be one second, but we also want to set a delay of 0.5 seconds because we don't want all of these to happen at the same time. All right, I'll save that. Let's see the top one and then the bottom one. Top, bottom. All right, now let's work on the right and left. So the right side, again, let's just take this, copy it down, Alt Shift down arrow. We'll change the threes to a two. Two will be the right side. And then instead of bottom, we're going to have right. And then instead of translate X, it's going to be translate Y, because now we're going vertical. This is going to be a negative 130%. Now we're going to swap the width and the height. So the width, we want to be four pixels. 
and the height is going to be 100 percent the linear gradient we're going to set that to 180 and then again change this to translate y in the hover and then 100 percent and the delay on this one will be 0.25 seconds we'll save that now we should see the top right and then bottom there we go one more time all right now the left side again we'll just take these copy alt shift down arrow change the twos to a four right is going to go to left we're going to do the translate y we'll start that at 100 percent width and height will be the same and the gradient degrees needs to be the opposite so that's going to be 360 and then on hover we want it to be a negative 130 and the delay on this one will be 0.75 seconds we'll save that now we should see all four sides and then the glow nice All right, that's all there is to it. I hope this was helpful. Under 100 lines of code here, very simple. If you want to see more CSS videos, let me know in the comments below. Like this video to help me out and subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks for watching.